Hello everyone. One evening, a man walked into a bar for a quick drink. There were three bartenders there, but all are very busy. Not able to wait, he said to one of the bartenders, Hey, give me a glass of whiskey before the problem arises. The bartender poured him a glass of whiskey. The man, instead of sipping it slowly, finished it in one gulp and said, Pour me another shot before the problem begins. Again, the bartender quickly poured the man another drink and handed it to him. The man once again drank it in one go and held the glass out to the bartender and shouted, Fill it up again. But my friend, said the bartender, what about the money for the drinks you have had so far? You see, I told you, replied the man. Now the problem has begun. Friends, before baptism, there seems to be no demand on us to manifest our faith in Jesus Christ. But as soon as we are baptized, regardless of whether we are infants or young children or adults, we are called upon to live for Christ. Yes, from the time of our baptism, we are under constant pressure to be a good Christian. For instance, just because we are Christians, we are often expected to be kind, patient and forgiving. One might ask, why are we constantly reminded to fulfill our obligations and promises to God and others? It is because those of us who claim to follow Jesus Christ consistently fall short of living up to the high goals Jesus has set for us. Friends, today's gospel can help us better understand this aspect of our Christian life. Jesus set out on his final journey to Jerusalem. In the time of Jesus, from Galilee to Jerusalem, it must have been a three-day journey through the villages of the Samaritans. Who were the Samaritans? The Samaritans were descendants from various tribes, and they lived in the northern kingdom of Israel. They worshipped Yahweh and read the Torah as did the Jews. In some respects, they were stricter in their observance of the Mosaic laws than the Jews. But because they were a racially mixed society, the Jews hated the Samaritans and considered them to be no longer pure Jews. The Samaritans on their part had developed a hatred for the Jews, who seemed to be judgmental. The ill feelings increased when King Cyrus, who lived about 500 years before Christ, gave the Jews permission to return to their homeland from their Babylonian exile and rebuild their temple in Jerusalem. The Jews refused to let the Samaritans help rebuild the temple because they felt the Samaritans were not true Israelites. The Samaritans, having been rejected by the Jews, built their own temple on Mount Gerizim and worshipped God there. So, at the time of Jesus, the ethnic and religious hostility between these two groups certainly was more intense, but Jesus had to make his way through a Samaritan village. When the Samaritans refused to show hospitality to Jesus because he was going to Jerusalem and not to their temple, the disciples obviously were hurt and angry, and they wanted to strike back. They wanted Jesus to display his power and teach the Samaritans a lesson. They asked Jesus to bring down fire from heaven to destroy the Samaritans. But Jesus reprimanded them because God's power was going to be shown in a much different way. And then as they were journeying by another way, three people wanted to follow Jesus. The first one said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. Friends, when someone offers himself to follow Christ, the natural reaction is for him to encourage him. But Jesus seemed to discourage the prospective disciple by saying, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, 
but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. Friends, it's not clear if this expression was used in response to what had happened to him in the Samaritan village or even to his being buried in a borrowed grave later on. Whatever the case, Jesus let the potential follower know forthrightly the cost of following him. That is to say, following Jesus would not be like following someone who could offer him the luxuries of a comfortable home or comfortable life because Jesus himself did not have even a place to lay his head. Friends, Jesus did not turn the man away. Jesus only allowed the man to make the final decision himself. The other two men wanted to follow Jesus at their convenience. One of them wanted to follow Jesus after burying his father and the other after saying farewell to his family at home. Jesus said, Let the dead bury their dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And to the other he said, No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. Friends, in each case, Jesus' response pointed to the radical nature of the commitment and the cost of a disciple or a follower must be willing to pay. Jesus used the occasion to teach his disciples who were indeed following him rather than to potential followers about discipleship and about the implications of following him. He wanted to warn them of their impending suffering because of him. He knew that his disciples would soon have to leave behind the comforts of their homes, familiar places and acquaintances and relationships and other things and go completely to unknown places and bring the good news to the people. Friends, what lessons can we learn from this gospel story? Throughout his ministry, Jesus respected the right of every person to choose or reject him and his message, and even final salvation. That is why Jesus refused to curse the Samaritans. Friends, let us all be like Jesus. Let us not be angry or upset with those who reject Jesus and his message of salvation. Let us not hurl curses at those who mock and ridicule our faith in Jesus Christ. Let us not worry too much about the ones that are weak in the faith, but pray for them. If certain people choose to follow Jesus at a more convenient time, let us give them the opportunity to make a personal decision to follow him in their time. And at the same time, let us focus on our personal faith journey. Let us follow our Lord Jesus completely and sincerely. Let us follow him despite opposition and obstacles. Let us remember St. Paul's injunction that for freedom Christ has set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. Friends, let us remember the cost of our following Jesus. It requires personal sacrifices and perhaps even giving up normal family responsibilities in order to concentrate completely on serving the Lord. Let us remember that since Jesus suffered, all of us, his disciples, can expect to suffer also. Amen. God bless you.